Once you're ready to file for your J-1 waiver through exceptional hardship, you can go to travel.state.gov for your DS-335. In this video, I'm going to let you know about that. So let's dive in and let the journey begin. Hello everyone! This is Emery. Welcome to Powerful Couple Journey, where we show you our random activities here in Central Florida. Just like what I said, if you are ready to do your J-1 waiver exceptional hardship, you can go to the Department of State, which is the travel.state.gov, and type DS-335. Or you can search through Google the DS-335 and it will pop up and will give you the instructions on how to file that one. But prior to doing that, you need to know what are your grounds for a waiver. Waivers are needed for J-1 teachers just like me. If you have a 212A rule home residency requirement. I am from the Philippines and I got here in the US through a J-1 visa. That visa has a 212A rule stamped on my DS-2019 as well as in my visa. However, I still did the process with the advisory opinion just making sure if I have the 212A rule because by submitting the advisory opinion, that is also my case number that is used for my DS-335. So the moment I've had the word subject on the online portal of the Department of State, then I also use my case number to check my processing for the DS-335 or the waiver to get a favorable recommendation. We need a favorable recommendation from the Department of State before the USCIS will give their results if you are granted a waiver. I am not an immigration lawyer. I am just an ordinary J-1 teacher who is from the Philippines with 212E rule. I got my waiver through my U.S. citizen spouse through exceptional hardship waiver and now I have a green card. This is my way of sharing to you my experiences and how I did it. If you wanted to know more about the process, I have videos and a step-by-step -step process I did and I'm also going to be showing you my timeline soon that way you know how I did it together. This is going to be within the two years that you're going to be processing your waiver so make sure if you are a J1 teacher you plan ahead with your spouse or with your fiance on what year you're going to be getting married and all the processing because you need all the evidences in order for you to do your submission for the DS-335. Speaking of that, you need your statement of reason. If you want to know about our statement of reason, you can visit our website, powerfulcouplejourney.com, where I'll show you our statement of reason and other documents that I use in order for me to get my waiver. Prior to this, there's no information on the internet, but I did a due diligence, I did my research, I did everything that has to be done, including looking at videos when it comes to the attorneys on the internet and in YouTube, asking them in their comment section, like, what is this about? What is case on hold? How would I know that I'm going to be very close to getting a favorable recommendation with the DS-335? So I did all the research and above all, I did pray. I'm a believer of Jesus Christ and I always pray every single day, checking my case number, looking at the timeline if I did it the right way because I only had a consultation with an immigration lawyer. I didn't hire a lawyer by myself or with my husband because they are very expensive. And the lawyer that we have a consultation with in Orlando said that our case is impossible. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. With that, I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, if this is your will for me and my husband to stay together in the U.S. without fulfilling the 212E rule, please help me with this. 
help me to find the documents that I've been needing and help me to connect with the people that have the same experiences that way if I can do it DIY then I'm gonna be having series of videos like this to show you how I did it and helping other J1 teachers to navigate whether they wanted to do it DIY or they can have an immigration lawyer who can help them with the step-by-step -step process. Remember with your DS-335, you also have a certain fee that you're going to be paying and you have to put a lot of evidences. So what I did was it's kind of backwards in my end because I never really know that I have to submit the DS-3035 first prior to submitting the I-612 but it works in my favor in the year 2021 because the moment I submitted the I-612 and they asked for an RFE or request for evidence then one of the evidences there that they're needing is if I submit my DS-3035 and with the letter that I received from the USCIS with my I-612 it says there that my case is on hold because they're asking for an advisory opinion from the Department of State and if I didn't submit my DS-335 I would have to submit that one that way they can proceed with their decision if I'll be given a waiver or not so my case I-612 was pending with the USCIS for almost a year then I submitted my DS-3035 through the Department of State I had all the processing whatever evidences I have in my I-612 I did with my DS-335 that includes psychological evaluation with my husband emotional hardship stated there financial hardship condition in the Philippines what are the hardship that my husband is going to be facing if he will stay here by himself in the U.S. or if he will go with me to the Philippines to fulfill the 212E rule home residency requirement for two years. So those information was submitted together with our evidences, letters from our friends and family, including our pastor because we got married in a church and other papers, other documents, pictures that we submitted showing that we really are legitimate husband and wife. I am not just there to get the green card but I'm there to support my husband financially and emotionally, physically, everything especially that we have the psychological evaluation. I am so blessed because my husband is already seeing a psychologist prior to us getting married because he has a PTSD and other things about trust issues so really help us to get our waiver with the DS-335 and by God's grace we got a favorable recommendation it took us almost 15 months with the Department of State because they need to have further information and we even asked for our state congressman and state senator in order for us to expedite the process here in the state of Florida you can ask them and they have like a security question that you have to fill and other information that they are the only ones who can tap the Department of State or the USCIS in order for them to open your case and ask your plea to expedite. Again, you have to see the timeline when it comes to the DSR-35, it took me 12 months to get some information and I see that from the USCIS on the portal, they put their I-613 and I-612 submitted. I-613 is a paper form that they say that you're gonna be given that waiver however they're waiting for the DS-3035 favorable recommendation. I'm so glad that I was able to get it and this is my timeline right here and the favorable recommendation that I have and I'm so thankful to God that right after two weeks then the USCIS granted my I-612 and that's what's needed in order for me to have my green card in place or the I-485. It's gonna be 
tedious process but if you know the step by step and if you have the right resources it's going to be easy and if you have an immigration lawyer that will be great because they're gonna do it with you step by step but if you're compelled to do it DIY then this channel is really here to help J1 teachers or J1s alike that are looking for the processing of their waiver through do-it-yourself process. This is Emery and I hope that you will tune in, subscribe, like, and share our YouTube channel, Powerful Couple Journey. That way, a lot of people will be given a chance that this channel is really to help and to give information about our immigration process. I also have our J1 Waiver Helping Hands group where we share our ideas about the J1 process and how we do it with exceptional hardship waiver. Thank you so much everyone and please tune in. I'll see you on our next video. Good bless!